Hello class, this is the video lecture for chapter 24, entitled Textures of Worship, colon, Handel, and the English Oratorio. So the Oratorio is the third um, form of music. We said the opera, and then the cantata, and the oratorio, which are all opera-like. Of course, the cantata and the oratorio are sacred music and the opera is secular music, but they all use solos that include recitatives and arias and um, choruses. And there's a libretto, a storyline, either sacred or secular, and it involves um, monody with the basso continuo, and it involves our ritornello. So those, all those elements are in the opera, the cantata, and the, rest, uh, and the oratorio. Let's open the screen for the PowerPoint, and let's begin. Chapter 24, what does it say? It says the oratorio is a large scale dramatic, right? It's a drama genre with a sacred text performed by solo voices, chorus, and orchestra. It is not staged or costumed. So I must say that, the, that either is the cantata. So where the, the difference between the opera and the two sacred, uh, forms of the cantata and the oratorio is that the cantata and oratorio do not use costumes, there's no staging, and it's just the music that is the same. But it does have a storyline, although the storyline is sacred. So originally conceived to put forth the message of the Catholic Church, the oratorio bears many similarities to the opera. Again, oratorio is one of those words that when, how you use it, um, it has a different meaning in different settings. And so the composer that we're gonna reference for the oratorio is George Frederick Handel. He built his career as a composer of Italian opera, but later in his life, he invented the English oratorio, combining elements of Italian and musical, uh, English musical style. He was quite a businessman, where Bach was not quite a businessman. Handel's oratorios, including the Messiah, which is the name of the oratorio, which we will sample some music selections from, have remained popular up to the present day. So what is an oratorio, right? It's an extended work for chorus, vocal soloists, and orchestra, based on a dramatic story drawn from scripture and performed as a concert work without acting or staging. So the difference is, in the cantata, which is part of the church service, the oratorio is not part of a church service. It could be performed at a church, but only as a concert. So again, the cantata was a dramatic work uh, like an oratorio, and it also has the same parts of the chorus of vocal soloists and orchestra, but it is part of the church service. And then, you know, the similarity of parallel uh, form is the mass, right? Which uses the ordinary prayers. So these are different types of uh, dramatic works. Magnificat, which um, is not important to us right now. And the same thing with the Passion. But you'll see like Bach wrote a piece of music called The Passion. And so it's a special kind of oratorio, oratorio right? But all oratorio is based on a uh, uh, something from the Bible, and the Passion is for the Holy Week services, right before Easter. Uh, oratorio. Okay, I think I've already told you these things, right? It has a libretto, and the libretto is the story from a Bible, from the Bible. So in, in the, the actual, the word oratory comes from orator, right? Or a speaker. 
So George Frederick Handel. Uh, let me change this to share the map. Since uh, Bach was German, right? Born in 1685. Handel was also German, also born in 1685. So Handel lived in Germany. He went and spent time in Italy and studied and wrote music there. Then he went to England and he made his fortune there writing operas and then the oratorio. And it's just a coincidence that when he was in Germany, uh, before he went to Italy, before he went to England, he uh, worked for a um, nobleman, Frederick, and it, it turned out that England had this thing about uh, the, uh, years ago they they separated and chart started the church of england right kind of the same time that the lutheranism did and they had different motivation to do it because the, the one king wanted to divorce his wife and it was not permitted and he asked asked, uh, asked and requested the pope to grant him uh, a divorce and they would not do it so the English king just said, okay, fine, I'll just start my own church, which he did, the Church of England. And then uh, as time passed and he died and his heirs took over, uh, one of the kings didn't have, uh, you know, it was like cousins and, and things. who's to find the next heir to, to be the, the monarch. And as it turned out, uh, the only one that was a legitimate heir was a Catholic. And the legislature in England says, well, we're not going to have a Catholic king. So they searched and uh, for another heir, and they found Frederick, the same one that Handel knew in Germany. And this man who was a German became the king of England because he was the next heir that was a Protestant. And how this turns around is that... Uh, when Handel left uh, working for this nobleman, the future king of England, he uh, kind of abandoned his post and he was worried that he was going to get in trouble. And then he's back in England and this man became uh, the king and he was afraid that the king was going to seek revenge on him. And we'll see in another chapter uh, when we listen to Handel's water music that he wrote the music for this king, the same one. Okay, so let's go back now to the PowerPoint. Okay, so uh, so Handel became really popular in, in England and he died and incidentally, he made like 10 times as much money as Bach ever did. And Bach was trying to, you know, get out of the working for the church. And, and he, he wasn't successful at doing that where uh, Handel was a very shrewd businessman and he made money selling tickets and made a lot more money than working for the church. So what did Handel do? Well, he wrote 40 Italian operas and then he started writing oratorios and of course he wrote orchestral suites which we're going to sample in another chapter but Handel uh, the clever man that he was uh, was putting on operas and writing operas and it's expensive to put an opera because you have to pay for uh, costumes and and prima donnas and and it, it gets uh, very expensive and uh, you're dealing with uh, egos that are not cooperative and opera kind of went out of style in England and he was wondering what he should do. So he decided to write oratorios and then they became very popular because it was a reason to go to the concert because it was a sacred reason, right? It was tied to the Bible. Again, oratorio is different than a cantata because a cantata is part of the church service where the oratorio is a concert of sacred meaning. So Handel invented this new genre of the oratorio as we are talking about here. 
And uh, this piece of music called The Messiah, which we're going to sample, was, and again, just to show you how clever Handel was, uh, if you are a Catholic, and there are two times, two major holidays of the year, right? They are Christmas and Easter. And if you are Catholic, you know that six weeks before Christmas and six weeks before Easter, there's a time when you are, um, if you're a good Catholic, you're supposed to give something up, right? We call it uh, Advent before Christmas, and we call it Lent, Lent before Easter. So during this time, you're supposed to have some kind of a sacrifice. You know, we would, you know, as a kid, my mother, you can't eat meat on Friday during the whole six weeks. Is it okay? And so we had to eat fish or something, and, and you might give up something you, you liked, right? You, you can't say, well, I'm going to quit smoking cigarettes if you didn't smoke cigarettes. That's not giving up anything. But many people might choose to not go to the opera, right? Because they say, well, this is uh, secular music, and so I'm going to, this is my sacrifice. So Handel wrote The Messiah, which has three parts. There's this, the one third of it is about the Christmas and one third of it is about Easter and one third is about redemption. So if you were a Catholic and during Lent or Advent, you said, well, I'm going to sacrifice something. You could say, well, gee, I'm not going to go to the opera, but I'm going to go to the oratorio, which is much like an opera, right? No costumes, no staging, no smoke bombs, no waterfalls, but a storyline that's from the Bible and plenty of arias and uh, orchestral music, Ritornello's, uh, Monody, um, Basso Continuos, all the elements of opera without being secular. So uh, Handel wrote this in such a short period of time, in 24 days, and it premiered in Dublin, Ireland, and another little side, side story is, as he was writing this in this short period of time, and he was starting to rehearse the music, it became well known to the public that this great piece of music that was, be, was being written. And uh, on the first performance, they published in the newspapers and requested that people, uh, in, in order to have more room at the concert, they asked the men to leave their swords at home and for women not to wear hoop skirts takes up extra room to have your sword and a hoop skirt with your partner. So we're going to sample from this oratorio. Uh, and there are, uh, gosh, uh, like 50 some parts to it. It might take several hours to perform the whole thing. But generally, at some time during the year, you'll find performances of at least part of the Messiah performed in El Paso. And again, you could do it for Christmas. You could do just the Christmas section, or you could just do the Easter section, or you could do the whole thing. Uh, so there's a lot of polyphony and a typical um, Baroque style of music. There is a narrator, right? Of course, the narrator sings, and uh, different characters from the Bible in the, in the storyline. So let's, uh, and, and when we, when you, we, we play the Hallelujah Chorus, you're gonna really recognize this uh, immediately because you've heard it someplace. Um, the Rejoice Greatly, O Daughter of Zion, number 18, we're gonna hear that first. And, it's a da capo aria. So it's written for soprano voice alone. It's an aria, right? It's a, it's a, it's a, full of wonderful melody. Da capo, meaning that it's a section is A, B, and A. Da capo means from the top, so they wouldn't write out the music for the A section. You just write the A music and the B section, and they would put D period, C period as an acronym, meaning da capo, from the top. And then you play the A section again. It's full of melismas. Remember that word that means that you have many notes per one syllable. And it's quite melismatic. Again, there are ritornellos involved here, or exchanges with the voice. The voice sings, and you have the ritornello, and the voice sings, and the ritornello. 
And uh, when we do the Hallelujah Chorus part, notice that if you, they'll show parts of the audience and you see everybody standing or a number of people standing because it's tradition. And if you know, you will stand because the first time the King of England saw this performed, for some reason, when they came to the Alleluia Chorus section, the king stood up. And when the king stands up, everybody stands up. And the question is, did he just, was he asleep? And he woke up because he was startled because the music was suddenly loud? Or he was just tired of sitting? But nevertheless, it's a tradition to this day when you do the Alleluia Chorus for everybody to stand. So Handel is buried in this cathedral that still exists, Westminster Abbey. All right, here is uh, Handel's Messiah excerpt, part 18, the soprano aria called Rejoice, and really take note of the melismas. <laughs>
full of melismas, right? Soprano, aria. Okay, this section is number 44, the Hallelujah Chorus, right? And I'd be surprised if you haven't heard this someplace, either in sarcasm or some other kind of a setting. Again, notice uh, at some point they'll show the audience and you'll see people standing. Just to note that the first sample from the Messiah that we heard was from the Christmas section, and the Hallelujah Chorus is from the Easter section. So there you have it. That concludes our video lecture for chapter 24 on the oratorio and George Frederick Handel.